You are watching a production of Civic Center TV. Find our on-demand programming on civiccentertv.com and follow us at Civic Center TV on Twitter and Civic Center TV 15 on Facebook. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. It's time for the Splash Live from Civic Center TV, featuring stories from and about people like you in the greater West Bloomfield area. Simulcast on cable, 89.3 Lakes FM, social media, and the web. Now live from Green Media Center on Walnut Lake Road, it's the Splash Live! Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm your host, Tyler Keefe. Thank you for joining us. Our top story today, as it has been all throughout the week, the big news over at the Recreation Activity Center where West Bloomfield Parks is currently in the process of moving forward with plans to renovate the Recreation Activity Center, moving the current building, as you're seeing on your screen, on civiccentertv.com, and it's 8,400 square feet, into a full-on community center, 30. 3,000 square feet as the current plans are opening the doors to, uh, to an idea and discussion with the township board earlier on this week. We'll hear more about that over the next seven days as it goes to the Parks and Recreation Commission next week, Thursday. But already those plans in place and on paper and ready to go, making those final revisions to it before a resolution goes before the Parks and Recreation Commission and eventually moves on to the Township Board in either March or in April. Here's a brief overview of it, as you may have heard on Monday night at the, at the Joint Township Board and Parks and Recreation Commission meeting as Executive Director Kelly Heyer went over some of the key details. The opportunity presents itself to ask the voters to consider a 20-year, $25 million bond proposal that if pr approved, would provide critical support for creating a healthier community through expanded recreation programming as well as enhanced park amenities. Located right here on the Civic Center campus, which is the ideal location since it's both familiar and a source of pride for so many residents. The new Connect would be nearly four times as large as the current Recreation Activity Center to meet com community demand for programs and services. So growing our 8,400 square feet, which is the current building now, that would be renovated. And then in addition, so it would bring the total building square footage of 33,000 square feet. So we'd like voters to consider the 20-year, $25 million bonds for the expanded community center and park improvements for the August primary 2024 election. We're going to continue to hear a lot more on this in the coming days and weeks as we get closer and closer to the point where potentially this could be put on to the August 6th uh, pr a primary ballot, a primary election ballot uh, that would, uh, in, in that case, it, should it be approved, put a millage forth. A, a small increase in taxes, roughly $36 per 100000 of home value uh, going forward for the next 20 years to build this facility. We have so much programming already centered on this story on our website on civiccentertv.com. We compiled an entire piece of, uh, of bits and pieces from Monday's joint work session between the Township Board and the Parks and Recreation Commission, as well as some field interviews we did uh, on Monday night with the with uh, Chairperson Robert Brooks from the Parks and Recreation Commission, and with Mikkel Hafner, who is one of the architects from DLZ Corporation behind the plans for, the, for the, this design at the Recreation Activity Center. And we even talked to Executive Director Kelly Heyer earlier on this week. You can find a full listing of when these programs will air on Civic Center TV as well as on 89.3 Lakes FM and find them all online on demand on civiccentertv.com. In addition, stay with us in just a little while on the program. We will talk to Parks and Recreation Commission Chairperson Robert Brooks about this from the Commission's perspective. This is not a new project. It's been and something that's been in discussion for a very long time and finally coming to fruition. Why is that the case? You know, why is this the perfect time? And you know, what's gone into those discussions over the years, over the decades from West Bloomfield Parks? We'll learn about that and more later on in the program. Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We'll take a short break on the other side. More stories from across our four communities and beyond. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. What people are watching in Kego Harbor, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. 
Live, local, and social. It's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join our team as we highlight people and events that are making an impact in the greater West Bloomfield area. Catch us live Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Thank you. Thank you. When you have a gambling problem, you have a money problem. Don't let your gambling cause you financial hardship. If you or someone you love is struggling with gambling, we can help. Get free confidential counseling and win your life back. Learn more at michigan.gov slash problem gambling. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Follow us on Twitter at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. And now, back to The Splash, live. Live, local, social, it's The Splash, live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm your host, Tyler Keith. Thank you for joining us, and as always, keeping up to date with us on our website on civiccentertv.com, which includes links to all of our social media so you can keep us in your feed for the latest news and updates from across the greater West Bloomfield area every single day. We're getting to that time of the year. Sooner or later here, we're going to be in the spring months, and that's when we recognize our great volunteers and people making an impact in our community each and every day, and that includes our kids. On the first day of May 2024, the Youth Recognition Awards from West Bloomfield Youth Assistance will be taking place, and nominations are open right now for these awards. There's a number of different elements that go into it. Now, of course, all the kids that are nominated must be of school age. By and large, they've got, they have got to be in the West Bloomfield School District or if they're in an outside school district, the community service that they're providing needs to directly help us right here in West Bloomfield in order to qualify for that in the greater West Bloomfield area, West Bloomfield, Kegel Harbor, Orchard Lake Village, and Sylvan Lake. In addition, volunteer service hours, always recommended, always applauded for our students. But for these awards, these volunteer service hours may not have been used for school credit. They have to be outside of any school credit uh, the work that's being done with community service involved. There's a full listing of information and requirements as well as a form you can fill out if you have a kid in, in the community that you feel should be nominated for a Youth Recognition Award with West Bloomfield Youth Assistance. Visit their website, wbyouthassistance.org or follow them on Facebook at WB Youth Assistance for more information. Another, another thing you can do to nominate people volunteering in our community, both uh, kids and adults alike, is nominate them for Michigan Week awards uh, open right now. Those nominations through February 16th at 11.59 p.m. So a little bit over a week left to get those nominations in. Next week, Friday, is when those cut off before we, uh, before we will ultimately award those volunteers and people making a difference in our community on Friday, May 10th at 7 a.m. with a live broadcast even right here on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. As you see on this flyer on your screen on civiccentertv.com, you go to michiganweek.org to make those nominations. Michiganweek.org to make the nominations. Learn more about all the various categories. We're supporting kids. We're supporting adults in the community, those in our schools, uh, environmental stewardship awards, and so many other categories that you can explore and find people making a difference in our community each and every day. Look, whether they're in the Optimist Club and they're doing something great within your local Optimist Club in the greater West Bloomfield community, or it's your neighbor that's you know, sweeping brush off the street after every storm or goes next door when their neighbor Neighbors are out of town and uh, plows their driveway during the during the winter snow months. You know, th those are all the kind of things that they're looking for. Michigan Week. 
www.civiccenter.org. Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We're going to take a short break on the other side. We're celebrating National Counseling Week, and we'll recognize our school counselors right here on the Splash Live. Stay with us. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. I'm an ex-drug dealer, and I'll be your sub today. Two milligrams of fentanyl can be lethal. A lethal dose is in here. Who gets it, I won't know. It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. The sad reality is, Fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. More kitchen now. Find local municipal meetings at our program schedule on civiccentertv.com. Find when your meetings air live or when they're replaying on our Civic Center TV live stream. Find it all at civiccentertv.com and click schedule at the top of the screen. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Find us on Instagram at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. And now, back to the splash, live. Live, local, social, the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM all throughout your work week. I'm your host, Tyler Keeft. Thank you for being with us. This week is National School Counselors Week being celebrated by the American School Counselor Association and school districts like ours right here in West Bloomfield. Joining us is someone that knows a lot about being a school counselor and about working with our school counselor. Susie Eisner is the assistant principal at West Bloomfield High School and is with us now on the Splash Live. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a great week to celebrate our counselors. Really, any week is a great week to recognize the work that they're doing all throughout our schools, all throughout the year. For those that may not be familiar or may just think of school counselors as people we meet with once a year to devise where we're going to put our classes on our schedule for the next season, for the next year, the next semester. What do school counselors do? They have so much different work that they're doing every day. That's such a great question. Our counselors are such an essential part of kids' school experiences. They work with our kids definitely to help them with their um, post-high school plans, whether that's college or um, working in industry or gap years, any of that. But they also work to help our students through their development throughout high school. Many kids have gone through loss. They struggle with stress, anxiety, depression. Maybe they're having some social struggles and our counselors are there to support them through anything that comes their way throughout their high school experience. And, and, and Susie, they, they do this work all throughout the year. They're supporting students on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, it's not just the work either that these kids are doing in the classroom that they're providing support on. No, it's definitely um, in order for kids to get to the work in the classroom, they have to be in a good place socially and emotionally. And our counselors do so much to support them with that, um, whether it's stress from things happening at school or stress from things happening at home, whether it's the loss of a parent, a sick sibling, um, some friendship issues. Our counselors are, are available to our students um, they know their students well, they see when there's a change in their disposition and they make themselves available to be able to help our students work through that time in order to be able to do what they need to do in the classroom. And that does ultimately have an impact on these kids too, that counseling, both academic and non-academic, that changes the course of these students' academic lives in the classroom. It definitely does. It definitely does because 
sometimes what's happening outside of the classroom makes it really difficult for kids to engage in the classroom. Um, when when they can't do that, it, it gets in the way of their self perception and where they're going to go. So that counselor student relationship is so important. And our counselors at West Bloomfield High School are second to none. They um, there is nothing they won't do for their students. Um, and um, I have even seen them, you know, students who maybe are having some financial hardship have birthday celebrations for them or um, showing up at their games if they're athletics or their shows if they're in theater, um, different events so that they can connect with them in things that are important to students, not just the academics. As an administrator, Susie, uh, your assistant principal at West Bloomfield High School, you know, how do counselors assist you, the other assistant principals, on a principal pace, and, and all the other administrators throughout the school district in making our schools not, not only uh, you know, a pleasant environment, but a comfortable environment for everybody across the board? So they're really part of that essential team. Um, when we have a student that comes to, maybe they end up in the discipline office, something happened, there was a conflict, they end up in the discipline office. Oftentimes, uh, Mr. Glintz, who's our assistant principal and student relations will come to the counselor and say, listen, there was this conflict, but I think there's something more going on. Or I think these students need some strategies for how to work with each other. And so the counselors come in to try and give kids the tools and the resources and the strategies that they need um, to support them. Um, it could be in creating some events for kids that are new to the building. Every year we have students that are um, new to our building and our counselors do activities to help them um, acclimate to the building, to know their resources. Um, we do a signing day every year and the counselors celebrate students signing where they're going next year, whether that is trades, whether that is college. Um, so they celebrate that. Our counselors make sure that kids that do want to do college after school have all the resources, support, direction that they need in order to reach and achieve those goals. Susie Eisner is with us on the Splash Live. She is the assistant principal at West Bloomfield High School as we celebrate National School Counselors Week all throughout this week uh, in the first full week of February. You can keep up to date with even more information on the West Bloomfield School District and ways they're celebrating their school counselors on WBSD.org or on their Facebook page at West Bloomfield Schools where we're even broadcasting live today on the Splash Live. And, and uh, Susie, you know, there's so many kids in West Bloomfield High School, really in all all of our in all of our schools hundreds of kids per grade level thousands across the school so how is all of that attention uh, divvied up amongst these counselors that is a great question that is a great question because we have at the high school six counselors and we have about 1600 students um, so we build things in every year to make sure that every student connects with their counselor every year um, our counselors do something that we call minute meetings um, so they will schedule time to meet with classes where they meet with every student one-on-one -on -one for a few minutes. They talk about their goals, their interests, their concerns. Um, what questions do you have for me? How can I be most supportive? And that way, at the start of every year, every single student has had a private moment with their counselor and they are able to set the stage for what they need from their counselor that year. Then when it comes to scheduling time, we're a student-based schedule. We want to build a schedule that meets the needs of our students. Um, and so the counselors sit one-on-one -on -one again with each and every student. What are your plans? What are your interests? What are your passions? Um, and they, where are your credits at? And they build a schedule together with that student based on their personal individual needs. So we make sure that students have multiple times during the year where they have one-on-one -on -one interaction. And then of course, students sign up to meet with their counselors throughout the year. Counselors come down to the cafeteria, they're out around in the building, they push into classrooms for different things, they host different groups. Um, but we, we create processes so that every student builds a personal relationship with their counselor so that when they need something, they're not coming to a stranger, they're coming to a comfortable adult. 
and having you know hundreds of kids that you're that you're covering uh, as as a school counselor every year. You know, these six school counselors we have at West Bloomfield High School. That's still a lot of people that you'd have to intimately know and, and understand and how uh, how they work dynamically, socially, uh, academically, and more. And, and I, that that really just speaks to how big of of the unsung heroes our counselors are in our high schools. They truly are. They truly are. It's one of those things where you don't know what they do until you've walked in their shoes. Um, they, um, there is so much behind the scenes that they do on behalf of not just the students, but their families. Um, we have driven to families' homes when they need something and we need to support them in that way. They, um, are doing so much behind the scenes. And, um, you know, it's, it's a special person that can do the role of a counselor, because as you said, um, I think it's a mystery to a lot of people what's happening all throughout the day. Um, but ultimately what's happening is commitment to their students and um, really helping them be the best that they can be in the high school setting. Susie Eisner is with us, assistant principal at West Bloomfield High School as we celebrate National School Counselors Week uh, in the West Bloomfield School District and all throughout the United States uh, at, during the week of February 5th through the 9th. Susie, and uh, knowing all of this that the school counselors are doing and seeing clearly the impact that they're having each and every day, you know, how can we help our school counselors or how can we show our support for them, not only during National School Counselors Week, but all throughout the year, because th their job never stops. You know, I think what counselors want most is to help students be their best. And as families, the thing that helps most is the communication. When you can share with us what's happening so that we can support kids at, at school, um, that that helps counselors be successful in their role. So knowing that the counselor is a trusted person that you can share things with when there are moments of adversity or struggles. Um, and I think when they've been helpful, just sending a note, thanking them. Yes, it's their job, uh, but I think, you know, we all feel underappreciated at times and that really boosts the spirit of a counselor. Um, and just knowing that even though you can't see everything that they're doing, they're always working on your behalf. And if there's something that's not being done, then communicate to them and it will be done because your student is the most important thing in their world. Here's the way you can thank them, that the school district made a post about National School Counselors Week. I'd encourage you to go to their Facebook page at West Bloomfield Schools and make a comment thanking your counselor, thanking them for what they've done for your kids so far and you know, recognizing the work that they're doing. Or even comment on this video as we're broadcasting live on the West Bloomfield School District's Facebook page today. Susie Eisner is with us, uh, assistant principal at West Bloomfield High School as we celebrate National School Counseling Week. Uh, Susie, before we let you go, anything else that we should know about the work that our counselors are doing or other ways we can support their work every single day? Um, well, I thank you for, for having me on the show today. I think just understanding what a school counselor does um, is really helpful. Um, and just um, encouraging students to engage with their counselors, encouraging students to ask questions, to know that they have a safe place, um, to know that um, that counselor is always going to be an advocate for them. Um, I think just getting that message out is really helpful. And then again, posting a note thanking your, your student's counselor would mean so much to them um, and would be so fulfilling to them. So I thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being with us as well, Susie. You have a good day. You too. WBSD.org for more information on how to get in contact with your kids' school counselor. And, of course, you can always keep up to date with the latest from the West Bloomfield School District on their Facebook page at West Bloomfield Schools. Live, local, social, it's The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Stay with us on the other side, revolutionizing recreation in the greater West Bloomfield area. Big project potentially on its way at the Recreation Activity Center. We'll talk to West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation Chairperson uh, Robert Brooks after this break on The Splash Live. We'll be right back with The Splash Live.
Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Ronnie started doing prescription pills at the age of 15, and by 19, he died. If your child is struggling with drug use, try not to be too proud to reach out for help. Don't be worried about what the neighbor will think or your family. Just get your child the help they need. Sometimes it's the hard road to take, but um, the hard road is nothing compared to living with the fact that your child is no longer with you. There's hope and help at drugfree.org. Live, local, and social. It's The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join our team as we highlight people and events that are making an impact in the greater West Bloomfield area. Catch us live Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com. Or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. I'm an ex-drug dealer, and I'll be your sub today. Two milligrams of fentanyl can be lethal. A lethal dose is in here. Who gets it, I won't know. It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. The sad reality is fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. More kitchen now. What people are watching in Sylvan Lake, Civic Center TV, and 89.3 Lakes FM. And now, back to the Splash, live! Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm your host, Tyler Keith. Thank you for being with us. Biggest story in town broke earlier on this week, really earlier on this year with our team at Civic Center TV when we were out at the Chamber of Commerce's board installation breakfast at West Bloomfield Parks Connect, where Executive Director Kelly Heyer from West Bloomfield Parks broke the news that the Parks and Recreation Commission would be pursuing a massive expansion to the Recreation Activity Center. Now, that project has taken its first steps with a work session earlier on this week with the West Bloomfield Township Board, and now they move on to more of the official processes, and that's going to require the work of the West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation Commission. Joining us from the commission is their chairperson, Robert Brooks, on today's edition of The Splash Live. Robert, thank you for being with us today. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm yeah. uh, just so excited for all the exciting things happening with our West Bloomfield Parks. Yeah, I mean, it puts a big smile on my face. Uh, and and uh, that's been pretty par for the course for everybody from the Township Board, Parks and Recreation Commission, and even those in the public we've spoken to so far about this story since it's broken out in, in the past few weeks and certainly as it's grown in the past few days. For you, you're in, uh, you're in your third term now on the Parks and Recreation Commission, uh, your second now serving as chairperson of the commission. What is this moment like for you to get to really the starting line of this process to expand the Recreation Activity Center? So it's so exciting because after serving for approximately 11 years, this um, Recreation Activity Center expansion has been on our master plan for a long time. It's just something that we couldn't get to because of the fact that we had many um, underperforming assets in our capital um, uh, makeup. We had many things that we were doing in our parks. And quite frankly, we had some things that we were doing in our leadership that we were changing. And uh, during 2022, 2023, those were some really um, tough years for us in making some changes. We did some updating to our master plan during that time. Um, we've done some outstanding projects working with our residents and uh, we reopened Connect and quite frankly, there was just so much going on, and this was just a great time now to revisit and get this plan going. And so I'm just excited for the entire organization led by Executive Director Heyer um, and all of her resources that she has. 
And, and the team uh, getting connect to its current location, uh, that seems to be a big catalyst in all this, is getting Connect back up in operation. It started out just before the COVID-19 pandemic in the location at the Orchard Mall. Financial issues that hit really everybody during the pandemic led to its to it shuttering its doors. Uh, of course, also the need for us to stay at home and stay separated during that time didn't help. And it was years before that got back up and running. Seeing how that was executed, how did that play into maybe uh, motivating the commission and the day-to-day -day staff to say, now's the time that we put our foot on the gas and go after the Recreation Activity Center? So when we started the Connect uh, process, and this has been now about five years ago, maybe, maybe six years ago, um, and went into the Orchard Mall, um, it was a test case in order to understand what our needs were in the community. We wanted to understand from our residents, would we be successful in having a recreation center expansion? And we, you know, we didn't have the funds to um, go ahead and expand at that time, the center as we want to do today. And one of the elements of it was our seniors. Our seniors really didn't have a place to go. But quite frankly, also, since the closing of the JCC activities and um, some of the downsizing of other um, activities in our community, we have seen the um, uptick in young families moving into our community. And we see right now a great time to put in a facility that was really planned on this township site from the very beginning, but didn't get executed. As you well know and have spoken with others in the community, we're taking this and quadrupling the size of our recreation activity center that is on the site of the township. And I think bringing it all together and really following a plan that was the vision of our forefathers of this community is something that I just applaud. You know, when I'm serving here now 11 years, my oldest serving member on my commission is Merv Aronoff. He's a 20 year service member on our commission. The others have come since my time and they are all outstanding. They all bring different vision and different focus to this commission from uh, Merv Aronoff to uh, Adams, to Eric, to Winsel, to Kirkwood and Barish. All of these commissioners bring different backgrounds with different mindsets that really gel us together and make us a really, really diverse commission. I think with the leadership transformation that we've done from 2022 to 2023 within the organization, I think gelling that with this diverse mindset of this commission has really allowed us to do things that we would have never been able to do, giving us great capability. Executive Director Heyer was with us uh, earlier on this week to talk about this, and, and she mentioned you know, incorporating the team into making this plan happen. And as you, you know, give your flowers to the remainder of your co the, the rest of the commission uh, and, and their diverse points of view and their diverse ways of approaching complex issues and, and problem solving from the commission level, speak to that dichotomy between the commission and the team you have day to day at Parks right now and how that makes this whole process that much easier and really that much more fun for your organization. Yeah, you know, we've got people serving that serve in other capacities on other appointed commissions within the township, um, such as Sally Winsel, who serves on the Environmental Commission, and we have Dave Barish, who serves on the, um, I think it's Eagle Commission. And I, you know, I think that having these diverse mindsets across different areas within the township, as well as bringing in the foresight of a senior member like a Merv Aronoff, who has watched the finance and been the chair of our finance commission for, or com committee within this commission for some time, it's been just outstanding to get these mindsets working together. Um, you know, this leadership under Kelly Heyer who came up in the organization working as a superintendent over recreation brings a different mindset as well. You know, this parks organization, which was run by Dan Navarre when I first came onto this commission, was outstanding. And it was led also very well by Jennifer Tucker. And now having the leadership of someone who's come up in the organization um, as a superintendent in recreation paired with a wonderful 
staff and that staff's been recreated with Chris Fry as leading our parks as superintendent with Ashley Stokes, who has come up through the organization and leading as our manager of our recreation. And we've put in other areas such as we've brought in Stephanie Smith in finance as we had a retirement in that area. We've put in a new organization of HR with Ashley Fortin and we have a uh, a wonderful servant uh, a member um, under our media and uh, communications with Megan Tahako. And this group, I tell you, has the power and gelling of a teamwork that I've never seen in an organization. So now is the right time to do a project like this because we have the right people to get it done. We're joined by Robert Brooks, the chairperson of the West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation Commission. Big announcement earlier on this week. They are pursuing a massive expansion of the Recreation Activity Center from its current 8,400 square feet to this proposed new facility would be at this time 33,000 square feet right in the Civic Center complex at the location of their current building. And uh, Chairperson Brooks, earlier on, you had mentioned you know, the emphasis on senior services in recent years, of course, rebuilding Connect Multiple times and putting it in different locations and uh, executive director hire mentioned this during her presentation at Monday's special work session which is available uh, both in our special program highlighting the process so far as well as an on-demand version of that meeting on civiccentertv.com we have a growing aging population in our community 50 percent of the West Bloomfield population is at least 50 years of age or older and so a big focus it seems in this a recreation activity center expansion is on senior services, but what was also good to hear is that you're not only incorporating the seniors into a key part of this plan, but really every single element of what makes West Bloomfield Parks great is going to be housed in some way, shape, or form in this new building should everything go smoothly. That is so correct. You know, our young families moving into West Bloomfield are in need of having places for their children um, in our winter months as well as, you know, this facility will have a gymnasium. It will have the ability to have um, meeting space that often we're renting. So as an example, this evening, I'm going to a, a daddy-daughter dance with my granddaughter and son, and it's uh, gonna be over at the JCC. We don't have a space large enough to have it ourselves at the uh, Recreation Activity Center. However, in the future, we would be having those kind of events in this new center. And so that would make for a great place, bringing everything together in the same space with the library and the township and even our recreated and expanded police station. I think putting these things together makes West Bloomfield Township not only gelling together as a group, but putting it in the place that gets people to come and be part of community. I'm volunteering Robert Brooks to host the Michigan Week Awards in a few years when it ends up being hosted in that new new facility at the Recreation Activity Center. Keep that in mind, Deb Macon, Pam Zajac, Carol Hack, and the team at Michigan Week. He did a great job last year. It's time to bring him back when they get in that new building. More information on the expansion of the Recreation Activity Center as it goes through the proposal stage and, and potentially up for vote as early as August can be found yes. on WB Parks. Dot org. Robert Brooks is the chairperson of the West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation Commission and joins us on today's edition of the Splash Live. Robert, you know, this is all about continuing to expand and improve the services of West Bloomfield Parks. And look, if we went out and asked the average person in West Bloomfield what their favorite department is, what their favorite amenities are in the township, they're going to say the parks. It's, it's no secret to anybody or any organization. And so as you're making these efforts and you're continuing to improve, you know, how do you approach that? considering there already is so much love there and you know it's it's tough to go from being awesome to being even better you're so correct you know continue to raise the bar is something that great leadership can continue to do and we believe that mentorship in our community has been very important um, when we think about our leaders and we have township leaders, we have leaders here in, in the parks organization. We work together to make these great minds that have made West Bloomfield the place to be, and especially when we think about parks and we think about community, so that we are together making the bar go up for the entire township.
because quite frankly, just the parks themselves can be a shining star. However, without the township being the place that people want to live, continue to maybe stay in their homes, even past when the time when people are moving out and, and, and downsizing, we have a lot of people who are saying, I want to stay in my home. I can right size right here because this is an environment in a residential area that is outstanding. When we have the trails we have and the if we have the facilities that we're proposing with this uh, uh, rack expansion, this is going to be just more reason to have residents being excited about West Bloomfield as the place to be. You know, we have a downtown area that is really coming alive with all the construction and the things that are going on there. I think it's a prime time right now to also focus on our township having things that people can come and do. And I think with the um, we're going to have this um, walking area inside the large area. It's going to, if you look at the topography of the plan, it just looks out and has a spatial area looking out to the backside of the connected trail going off the backside of the township grounds. I think that this uh, facility is going to be so awesome until we're going to have to figure out how to make sure we've got enough parking spots and we've got enough area to make sure that the people, when they come to the library and they want to stay around for what's going on at the parks and there's something going on at the township, that we've got enough area completely so that we can have these people really enjoying the um, overall opportunity at the township location. The processes here are only getting started. Chairperson Brooks, uh, there's some business to take care of going forward from the commission level before this moves forward. At the, at, the, at the spot we're at right now, what are the next steps? So right now we're at that joint committee meeting time frame that happened this past Monday. And from there, we will move forward in our February meeting of the commission and approve the ballot language. And then that ballot language and what we approve in our February meeting is planned to go to the March Township meeting for a vote and for them to move forward with the bonding portion of this. And then we'll run a campaign and the campaign will um, give out information more detailed to our residents and um, get us in the mode to move toward a August 6 primary vote. And I think that um, will with with all the folks that um, tend to talk to me in the community, um, I think that we've got a very positive outlook on passing this. And uh, with the estimated low uh, tax increase that would be needed in order to approve this 20-year bonding, I think it's something that our residents will just be excited about. I think they'll be as excited as I am about having this come forward. Yeah, we're all very excited about this. A lot of smiling faces as we've kicked off this week and, uh, and had a lot of discussions on this recently, both on our program and all across the community. Hey, we put up a special program on Civic Center TV. It'll be replaying periodically all throughout your day. It's available on demand on civiccentertv.com. Bits and pieces of that special work session with the Township Board from February 5th. Some interviews we did, including with Chairperson Brooks and with Mikkel Hafner, the architect from DLZ Corporation that's helping them to design this new building and so much more information. All of that available on demand on civiccentertv.com. Chairperson Brooks, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Live, local, social. It's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. More news, information, and fun things happening in our community coming up next. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Find us on Instagram at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Hi, Lisa Brown here reminding you that Michigan's presidential primary is February 27th and the nine days of early voting begin February 17th. Remember, in the presidential primary, you must choose either a Democratic, Republican, or nonpartisan ballot if applicable. Thank you for taking part in our democracy. One scorching heat wave will leave me powerless to cool my insulin. 
When the storm rolls in, my time to find a pet-friendly evacuation center will have run out. <laughs> I'm relying on luck, but who knows if it'll be on my side. When it comes to disasters and emergencies, it's not a matter of if, but when. Take control. One, assess your needs. Two, make a plan. Three, engage your support network. Let's prepare so we all have a better story to tell. One in four Michigan homes has high levels of radon, a naturally occurring radioactive gas known to cause lung cancer. It doesn't matter where you live or what type of home you have. You won't even know it's there unless you test. So don't wait. Testing is cheap and easy. And if there's a problem, it's simple to fix. Visit michigan.gov slash radon to learn more. We took action, will you? What people are watching in Orchard Lake, Civic Center TV, and 89.3 Lakes FM. And now, back to the splash, live. Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm your host, Tyler Keeft. Thank you for being with us. Coming up on the February 27th primary election ballot, you're going to see some initial uh, some initiatives that include one that includes uh, some that includes a renewal of an operating millage for the West Bloomfield School District. On all these election ballots, when you see these initiatives, you get a small little blurb about what they mean, and often that's not nearly enough information for you to make a sound decision uh, on on the on these uh, millages and other initiatives. So, joining us to clear the air on the operating millage with the West Bloomfield School District is the Public Relations and Marketing Coordinator, Rebecca Fannin. Thank you so much for being with us, Rebecca. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, glad to have you on to talk about this. It's, it's coming up on this uh, upcoming presidential primary election ballot. And this operating millage is quite significant for the West Bloomfield School District. Been in operation for a while, and it's a big help, especially on the budgetary side. What does this mean for the school district? Well, first, I want to say this is not a tax increase. This is a renewal. So it's something that our taxpayers have been paying for a while. And both the non-homestead and the homestead piece are renewals. Um, but you're right. This is significant for our operating budget. Unlike a bond, which you can say you like a project or you don't like a project, this goes directly into our annual operating budget. It's 17% of our annual operating budget. And for a service industry like us, as a school district, over 80% of our our budget is people. Um, so this would be the people that make the programs run in our district. It's uh, um, It relates directly to our school safety, to teachers, counselors, social workers, bus drivers. This is what we do. And so if this is necessary for 17% of the school's budget and you know this has been in operation for a while, why does it have to come up for a revote? Is this something that regularly happens? That's a great question, absolutely. So what happened was, um, and I'm gonna give you the short line at the grocery store version of school funding. Essentially in the 90s, um, before Proposal A passed, what we raised in school taxes stayed here and that's what we spent. But there were school districts that were literally running out of money and closing their doors in May because they didn't have the money to make payroll. There were also senior citizens who are being taxed out of their homes and farmers who are being taxed off their land. So the state legislature said, we have to fundamentally change how we fund education. So since proposal A passed, in a nutshell, the money that we raise from school taxes goes to Lansing and comes back in a per pupil allocation. That's why those count days are so important for us. And we have another one coming up on Valentine's Day. February 14th is the second count day of the year. Um, but what essentially happens is the number of students dictate how much money you're getting back from the state and there's a per pupil allocation. Um, now there were some districts like West Bloomfield that were spending more than the agreed upon minimum when this passed in 1994 and so the state said a, we expect you to levy 18 mills on the non-homestead property, but if you were already collecting more than that agreed upon minimum, you can ask, ask your taxpayers if they will allow you to tax them at a rate with that um, old harmless millage so that you can stay at that rate. So West Bloomfield, for example, currently is the seventh best funded school district in Oakland County based on where they were in the 90s when Proposal A went through. If this doesn't pass, we'd be tied for last place in funding in Oakland County. 
You can find more information on this operating millage renewal proposal by visiting wbsd.org slash vote. That simple, wbsd.org slash vote, as you're seeing on your screen on today's broadcast. Rebecca Fannin is the uh, Public Relations and Marketing Coordinator with the West Bloomfield School District here to talk to us about uh, some of the information you may need to know before you make a decision on this operating millage renewal. And Rebecca, you mentioned both the hold harmless side and the non-homestead side. So this re renewal, as you mentioned earlier on, should this be renewed, it's not an increase in the taxes. It'd be staying at the same rate that you're currently paying in these taxes, uh, both uh, if you're non-homestead or hold harmless. For those uh, that may not understand the difference between those two, give us the cliff notes, uh, and you already mentioned it a little bit, between non-homestead and hold harmless. So the non-homestead millage um, proposal is only for non-homestead properties like commercial, business, rental properties, vacant land, and second home property owners. Um, so if you own a rental property, it would impact you. But it that 18 mil proposal doesn't impact homesteads. Like so, so most homeowners won't have an impact, but we have to ask homeowners every so often if we can continue to levy this on the non-homestead property owners. And then the homestead millage, um, is what I was talking about before. Like some districts like West Bloomfield had already spent more than that agreed upon minimum that was established with proposal A. So the state allowed districts like West Bloomfield to levy that hold harmless millage um, with voter approval to stay at their funding rate per pupil when proposal A passed in the 90s. And, and That's so, the CD version. Yeah, and so Rebecca, you know, there, there's plenty of elections coming up. We're in the primary season. We got the presidentials. We've got, you know, the congressional primaries and some special ones in between. Why this ballot for this operating renewal? That's a great question. So if we pass this before it expires, we can continue to call it a renewal. But if it doesn't pass, we will absolutely go back out again to voters in the summer, which would be the next ballot that we could get on because of timing. But at that point, we'd have to call it an increase because if it doesn't pass, it resets to zero um, when this is levied for the last time. We collect all of our taxes in the summer. And so if, if this doesn't pass before July, it would be called an increase, even though this is what taxpayers have been paying since the 90s. The other thing is that by tagging on to the presidential primary election, there isn't any cost to the school district for this election. So there, um, if we held an election at a different time of year, like in May, we would most likely have to pay for those election costs, which makes sense because our city clerks would have a lot of work to do to run those. More information can be found on the Operating Millage Renewal Proposal for the West Bloomfield School District on wbsd.org slash vote. They got an FAQ there with a, a bunch of different questions that you can get answered on this. And, and Rebecca, if people have questions beyond that, they want to learn more, they want to know more about how this operating millage affects the school district now and how it could affect the school district both if it passes or if it fails on the February 27th ballot, how can they get more information or get their questions answered? Absolutely. So my contact information is on that page as well, but you're always welcome to email me, Rebecca.Fannin at WBSD.org, or to call any member at ACS. We'd be happy to tell you. We also could come out and speak to groups. If you're interested in having us address your group and answer any questions one-on-one, -on -one, we'd be happy to do that also. But like you said, there's a ton of information at WBSD.org slash vote. All that information right there is also a link to that page and more information being posted on their Facebook page as well, at West Bloomfield School. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Tyler. I appreciate your help getting the facts out about this millage. Yeah, appreciate having you on to tell us more about it as well. WBSD.org slash vote. It's a good place to go, a good place to start to get the information that you need to know so that you can make a sound decision on whether or not to vote uh, to renew or to not renew this operating millage renewal from the West Bloomfield School District. WBSD.org slash vote. And again, this is on the presidential primary ballot on February 27th. Check with your local clerk's office if you're not sure if you are registered to vote. Live, local social. It's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. More news and information from across the greater West Bloomfield area coming up next. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. What people are watching in Kego Harbor. 
Civic Center TV, and 89.3 Lakes FM. A fresh start lets you refocus, helping you live in the moment, where you can take the lead or take a bow, basking in the glitz and the glow of winter. Because when the snow begins to fall, you feel the excitement rise. Set your sights on a winter wonderland as fresh finds new ways forward in Pure Michigan. When you have a gambling problem, you have a money problem. Don't let your gambling cause you financial hardship. If you or someone you love is struggling with gambling, we can help. Get free confidential counseling and win your life back. Learn more at michigan.gov slash problem gambling. Good nutrition can help make sure you have enough iron, calcium, and vitamin C in your body, which can make it harder for lead to enter your bloodstream. Help protect your family from the harmful effects of lead. And now, back to the splash, live. Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm your host, Tyler Keith. Thank you for joining us, and we also thank you for joining us live today on the Facebook pages of the West Bloomfield School District and West Bloomfield Parks. Follow them on uh, Facebook.com slash West Bloomfield Schools and Facebook.com slash WB Parks for more updates on their side of their operations all across our four communities. Coming up this weekend, Saturday, February 10th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., one of the biggest events of the winter season from the West Bloomfield Diversity Task Force is the 2024 Black Expo. It's going to be going on at the Orchard Mall at the corner of Orchard Lake and Maple in West Bloomfield Township. It is free to attend. Tons of different vendors, activities, and more to learn from. We recently had Sherry Ann Winter from the West Bloomfield Diversity Task Force on this very program to, to preview some of the fun attractions and different vendors coming to the Orchard Mall on Saturday. Let's hear what she had to say. Drummers and dancers. We're going to have um, the first African-American guitarist called Greenfield Guitar. I was going to be there doing a small performance, and we're trying to invite out the local school choirs to help us bring entertainment amongst the vendors and the shopping and the food that will be taking place. Hey, it's going to be a really fun afternoon on Saturday at the Orchard Mall. It's been a fantastic event these first few years that it's been an operation. And now from that conversation we had with Sherry Ann Winter, it's only getting bigger year in and year out. It's been tons of fun, uh, and, and we're going to be out there as well. So, hey, maybe even get yourself on TV, see yourself on this program earlier on next week. You can find more information on the 2024 Black Expo on the West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation website, WB Park. Org. They've also posted about it uh, on their Facebook page at WB Parks as well. Keep up to date on that and also more information on the 2020, 2024 Black Expo and all the work of the West Bloomfield Diversity Task Force. Uh, the Oakland County Water Resources Commissioner's Office is, is offering rebates for sustainable stormwater practices. Look, we're in the middle of winter, but as we get closer to spring and you're thinking about some spring cleaning ideas, maybe some sustainable ideas for your yard, a, ra a rain garden or a rain bucket or, or other provisions may be necessary. And hey, you can even get some cash rebates for making those sustainable choices. Here's a cool video from the Oakland County Water Resources Commissioner that tells you a little bit more about this program. The Rain Smart Rebates Program is here to help communities develop green infrastructure. This allows homeowners to uh, install green infrastructure on their properties. Um, that includes planting trees, doing rain barrels on their downspouts so the rain is collected, and rain gardens that allow the water to be directed into them so they can, uh, they can have a little garden on their property that looks very nice. All those things cost money and we can pay them back to do this. We're investing in these communities by doing this and at each homeowner can benefit from that. So green infrastructure helps us to mitigate those impacts from climate and these green infrastructure installations are able to capture a huge amount of water and let that water filter back through the soil 
instead of that water running off as we see into storm drains and going directly into our combined sewer system. You know, every little property that everybody owns is a small little piece of an area within a whole big watershed. So it makes a way bigger impact if you get your neighbor involved and makes a larger impact if you get your whole block involved. It absorbs water out of the ground, the leaves absorb some of the rainwater, it provides shade, it provides cooling in the community. All those things are benefited from planting trees. So if you keep a rain barrel on your property, after a rain you've got 50 gallons of water. You can use watering your plants or watering your yard or whatever you want to do with it. Oftentimes in environmental causes, it seems like it's hard to make an individual difference, but this is an opportunity where residents really have the tools and the resources being provided by the county to make a difference on their property. It really allows people to have a part in a broader solution for stormwater here in Southeast Michigan. This is the water resources we depend on for our economy, for our safety, for the health of the environment. All of that we need to protect. We're becoming resilient to climate change. Water Resources Commissioner Jim Nash and his team with even more information about this Rain Smart Rebates program. It is a one-time program you can, that you can get a rebate of up to $2,000 for rain barrels and other provisions you're making in your home. You can find more information uh, on the Facebook page of the Oakland County Government at OakGov or on the Water Resources Commissioner's Office's Facebook page, Facebook at Water Resource. OC. Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We thank you for joining us and encourage you to always stay up to date with us on CivicCenterTV.com. For our entire team at Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM, I'm Tyler Keeft. We'll see you soon on another edition of the Splash Live.